Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to thank both the Academy uh, and uh, Dublin Council for inviting uh, us all here tonight. It's a great opportunity to get the get this the stand and make a few points. I'm going to address you tonight, don't worry, for once it, it won't be about health economics because even though I can't see your eyes from here, I'm sure they would all start glazing over. I'm even going to restrain myself from launching a vigorous defense of the incomes of Irish consultants. Instead, I am going to talk about something a bit more general, which is the need for thoughtfulness. Now, I'm not referring to the kind of thoughtfulness which makes you remember your mother's birthday or your anniversary, although they can lead to tremendous domestic uh, inconveniences and catastrophes if you don't. I'm talking about a more general kind of thoughtfulness, the kind of thoughtfulness which we need to introduce in our public life both in this country and internationally, the kind of thoughtfulness which I believe has the potential to prevent public policy disasters, to prevent wars in many cases, and which I believe will ultimately be necessary if our species is to survive the real triad of potential existential catastrophes that face us in the 20th century, namely issues related to food, water, and, and energy. So what is thoughtfulness? I think it is both the inclination and the ability to approach a problem as unencumbered by prejudice as it's possible to be, and I'm not naive enough to think that any of us can completely discard the prejudices which we have accumulated over a lifetime, and to look at the essential components of a problem, analyzing how we can deal with them and coming up with a solution. Why did I pick it? Well, I think the evidence for a lack of thoughtfulness is all around us. In the United States, the largest uh, economy in the world, arguably the most educationally advanced country in the world, approximately 40% of Americans believe firmly that the world is less than 6,000 years old and that evolution did not occur. In our own country and in other countries in Europe, otherwise rational, logical parents have flown in the face of overwhelming medical advice and refused to have their children vaccinated for potentially life-threatening illnesses. Was this thoughtfulness? How thoughtful is the widespread assumption that there has been an epidemic of congenital malformations in the Ukraine and Belarus following Chernobyl, when in fact no such excess in congenital malformations has occurred, and the incidence is exactly the same as it is in Dublin or in Cork? Our history has given us perhaps the greatest example of thoughtlessness or lack of thoughtfulness with Hitler. How, how else can one explain how a large, sophisticated, educationally advanced country could fall sway to the simplistic, unthoughtful notion that all of the evils which had been visited on that country, or perceived evils, were in fact the fault of one ethnic group? The Iraq War. Would a thoughtful president of a thoughtful nation have been able to lead an entire nation to war in 2003 uh, in retribution or prevention of the terrorist attacks of September 11, 2001, even though the country that they invaded had nothing to do with it. As, as Kerry said at the time, it was as if America decided, full of self-righteousness after Pearl Harbor, to invade Mexico. Compare and, compare and contrast this to JFK, the extraordinary level of thoughtfulness that he brought to bear in the Cuban Missile Crisis of 1962, when hotheads on all sides were advising him to go to war, to launch preemptive strikes, etc. He kept it cool and prevented a worldwide catastrophe. Thoughtlessness leads, I believe, to hidebound ideological positions. It makes people assume certain things because they wish to be on the same side of the thoughtless ideological argument they have. Right-wing people thoughtlessly believe that poverty is always due to sloth, fecklessness, and a lack of personal responsibility on the part of the poor. Left-wing people believe it never is. Clearly, both are wrong. It also leads to strange bundling of intellectual values. You can go into any town hall in America and with a high degree of accuracy, you can predict, if you know what somebody's position is on gun control, whether they believe that President Obama's birth cert was, in fact, a forgery. The same type of thing, I believe, infects our politics in this country. We have the ultimately unthoughtful political system in Ireland. In fact, we've made it in our form. How is this? Well, in Ireland, we have a situation where people, in general, if they elect to align themselves to one of what are traditionally the two big parties, may do it because of culture, may do it for familiar reasons. Occasionally, it's entirely random. They will then find themselves in organizations which heavily disincentivize thoughtfulness. And this is one thing that has struck me since I've got into Leinster House. All the time, you see people gritting their teeth, voting against things or for things that they do or do not believe in because they must follow the mandate of the party whip. Um, 
Ladies and gentlemen, I would always remind you again of President Obama. At the time of the Iraq War, as a Democratic member of the US Senate, he opposed the war, uh, which was, uh, I think, really quite prescient. Would he have been able to do it in the political system which uh, occurs in Ireland? So what do we need to do? I believe we need to encourage thoughtfulness, critical faculties. We need to encourage people to develop the skill set which enables them to totally suspend those prejudices which come from them insofar as it's possible by virtue of tribe, by virtue of religion, by virtue of culture, national identity, etc. Part of this process, I believe, involves understanding that science is not just something which scientists do any more than arithmetic is just something that theoretical physicists and mathematicians do, and to understand that people need to learn science and the scientific approach to non-classically scientific problems every day of their educational life until they leave school. I think that's my time up, and thank you very much for your attention.